Hello and welcome to another edition of the Full Force News Burst, brought to you by GeneralJoes.com with me as your host, Chris. So much news I could burst, McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. Joining me today to discuss, again, the upcoming Transformers animated series heading to Netflix is Justin. Give me a f***ing break, please, Bell. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this news burst. The news is just flying in today. Newsarama reported that the origin story of Hasbro's Transformers will be told in an all-new animated series debuting on Netflix in 2020. The show is being developed by Rooster Teeth and the animation studio Polygon Pictures, with Transformers Combiner Wars writer FJ DeSanto in as showrunner. John Dadirian, director of anime for Netflix, had this to say. In this Transformers origin story, we will explore the expansive universe of Cybertron in a way that audiences have never seen before, to the delight of both existing fans and those coming into the franchise for the first time. The Transformers brand is a global phenomenon and we are thrilled to partner with Hasbro, Rooster Teeth and Polygon to bring this exciting new series to our members around the world on Netflix. The show includes writers such as George Christick, Gavin Hignite and Brandon Easton, who was famous for the 2011 Thundercats show and the most recent IDW Mask comic. The senior vice president for the Transformers franchise for Hasbro, Tom Warner, also added, We're thrilled to work with Rooster Teeth's new premium studio division to bring an all-new Transformers fan-oriented series to Netflix. Transformers has a rich history of great storytelling, and War for Cybertron is an exciting new chapter in the Transformers universe. So then, Justin, what are your thoughts regarding this rather exciting news? Oh, I'm thrilled. I think this sounds like it'd be really cool. I mean, part of me is a little bit hesitant because the showrunner is the same guy that was in charge of some of those web-based mm. Transformers animated series, which were horrific, to put it mildly. Yeah. But, you know, with They've got some quality writers involved. I mean, I'm a fan of Brandon Easton. He's done some really cool stuff in some other series. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's, I mean, there's no guarantee. It's kind of more adult-themed or, or more collector-themed, but I think there's a good chance of it. I mean, just the fact that it's focused around the war for Cybertron, I think, is a good indication that there's going to be, you know, a lot of conflict. And, you know, Rooster Teeth's a, a pretty cool company, and I know they've just released um, some animated series called Genlock, I believe it's called, yeah. which is been pretty fun you know i haven't seen all the episodes but i've seen a little bit here and there and it seems like it's fairly well done fairly high quality so i think there's some really really cool potential and i'm excited to kind of see what happens with it not just for transformers but for the possibility that you know if it's successful what else it could open the door for i like the fact that netflix are involved on this one because uh, i i feel like that always kind of just brings the i don't know the quality level might be brought up a little bit higher you know, might hold yeah. might might hold them to a higher standard on this one because yeah, the Machinima kind of series were just awful, like really bad. And I wanted to, you know, I wanted to give them the you know a fair go, but my goodness, I struggled even to watch yeah. five minutes, and that's what they weren't very long episodes. I, str- I couldn't no. even do that. I mean, I'm a media whore. I want to see my toys in like every form of media I possibly can, and I was a huge fan of Combiner Wars and. And I really loved kind of that era, not not just Combiner Wars, but, you know, Titans Return and, and Power of the Primes and all that stuff. And yeah. I was dying to see those cool toys in animation, you know, form. And one thing that the Machinima series did was, you know, translated the toys pretty accurately. Mm. And like you said, I could not even sit through those episodes. It was almost painful i mean just the dialogue and just it made no sense it was yeah they, they just were not good anywho with it obviously coming to with it coming to netflix as well and and the fact that we've got you know a pretty decent writing team on it again yeah. brandon easton's name came up and which you just mentioned you know you're excited to see what he can do on that i was really impressed with kind of you know the Tran- the thundercats series in 2011 really loved that um, the Mask series, in issue wise, absolutely really enjoyed the hell out of that. Right up until the last, I think, four issues, where it just went to complete pot. <laughs> but obviously, I think a lot of that was out of Brandon's hands. So, Probably. you know, like the, I get the feel. I'm, I'm, you know, obviously, I give him a lot, hell of a lot more respect than I think those last issues of the Mask comic, you know, should give you. Yeah. But uh, I'm definitely looking forward to this, and I think he can do a, a cracking job along with the other two writers that are attached to it as well, George Christick and Gavin Hignite. I'm, I'm really excited to see what can actually come of this because it says fan oriented and that is a very vague open yeah. thing I mean it could mean G1 it, it inspired it could mean fa- I mean there are fans of all sorts of different areas of Transformers I mean what do you do, you, do what do you take from that use of the word oh I definitely see it as kind of being G1 themed I mean if you look at that the siege, of, the siege for Cybertron toys which is the current ongoing Transformers series I mean they're clearly 
G1 friendly designs yeah. and they, you know, the whole thing is, you know, they've got their, their alt forms are all Cybertronian. So I could see it very being, you know, similar to that where they use some of that aesthetic. And I really think, yeah, they're going to be focusing pretty strongly on G1. And, and I, what I'm really interested to see is I was a really big fan of the, the High Moon Studios video games. Like, um, yes. you know, one of them I think was called War for Cybertron. Cybertron yeah, yeah. So I, I'd be interested to see kind of how this plays along with those. You know, it's interesting that, that they actually come out and say this is the most, you know, or the, the deepest look at, at Cybertron in, in history, which is kind of an odd statement considering there was those video games earlier and, you know, a lot of the IDW series kind of revolved around Cybertron's history. But, um, so yeah, I mean, I'm pretty excited to see kind of how it compares to some of that stuff. And I'm hoping, you know, maybe they'll take some of the positive fan reaction to, you know, that original cutscene in Bumblebee and kind of, you know, take that into consideration and, and um, maybe, you know, put that on steroids and stretch that out over a 10, 10 episode series or something we are not condoning the use of steroids but yes i uh, <laughs> <laughs> um what i would like to say as well is that it, you know that, that this probably has to come up as well i mean how many more times are we going to see an origin story of something yeah. we know so well but at the same time i'm very excited to see a take on this because i feel like so many times it's been done in the past i've just not really been that fast and i'm not saying that everything should be aimed at me it definitely no. shouldn't you know we you know prime robots in disguise rescue bots all those different different iterations of recent animated Transformers stuff. I understand why it happens and I understand that it's just not for me. I'm just really excited at the thought that this, if it's tying in with the Siege figures, then wow, we could be in for a real yeah. beautiful looking, you know, animated series. And especially Absolutely. with it on Netflix, I mean, that just, that really bumps my interest up about 50% more. Yeah, you and me both. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to get too excited because it seems like there's all these, all these, kind of things that get announced and you know before you actually get them in hand or see them in hand you, you just you have these little dreams you're like oh wow there's no way they could screw this up this is a perfect you know perfect storm of you know the right creative team the right property the right this the right that how you know how could this possibly go wrong and then somehow something always goes wrong but this really seems like you know a very good effective formula for a really fun return to, to cybertron so I, i'm very very hopeful that it's going to be something cool well fingers crossed that is the case one more thing justin just before you go obviously we are dying for some sort of gi joe thing obviously we're going to be getting the film soon do you think um, like a Netflix TV series, like an animated TV series, could complement something along the lines of, or bring in the Snake Eyes movie. Is that something you think you could see as well down the line? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I'd have to see what they do for Snake Eyes to kind of see how well it would translate. But I, I certainly think they could. GI Joe is is rich for kind of a refresh, and so many people get so locked into, you know, it's got to be Delta Force, it's got to be, you know, high octane military thriller you know, uh, red, white, and blue against evil terrorists. And I think if people can get out of that mindset, they would see that there is a rich opportunity for G.I. Joe to exist in the 21st century and to be a really cool kind of revisit, you know, nostalgic look without revisiting that that terrorism well or whatever. I think there's a lot of cool stuff that G.I. Joe could become. And uh, I think it, it is pretty rich for a Netflix not really, I don't want to say reboot, but, you know, if they if they align it with the Snake Eyes, see what they do with Snake Eyes, and then kind of build on that a little bit, I think it could be, you know, they, they have some cool opportunity for some cool things here. Well, I cannot wait to see, you know, what the Transformers animated show looks like, and I'm sure we'll see more and get more information over this weekend, which is, is even more exciting. Yeah. Justin, thank you so much again for jumping on. Really appreciate it. Not a problem. We'll be speaking again very soon, I should imagine. Uh, probably be a busy weekend. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, like, calm down, Toy Fair. It hasn't even started yet, really. <laughs> or I think it just yeah. started now. I just I just posted an image of uh, Omega Supreme. Oh, really? Nice. Uh, enjoy that when you get back. I will. That's it for this installment of the Full Force News Burst. Thank you to my awesome co-host, Justin Bell. See you next time. And as always, Full Force. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. And as always, you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com slash The Full Force. And if you would like to contact the show, you can message us on either of these platforms with feedback, questions or to say, who do you think you are? A serious operation now? No, not even close. Look out for more of these news bursts that we are posting on the Facebook page from now on. Full Force.